every phone call, every email, every face-to-face -face encounter. Mm -hmm. All of that impacts and shapes how they feel about the organization. Hey everyone, welcome to Operator Insights. I'm Julie Roberts and today with me is Susan Milligan who's over our patient experience. Welcome, Susan. Thanks for chatting with us today. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Awesome. So let's start first and foremost. What is patient experience? Oh, such a good question. You know, we have adopted the Barrel Institute's definition of patient experience, and they define it as the sum of all interactions shaped by an organization's culture mm -hmm. that influence patient perceptions across the continuum of care. The problem is nobody knows what that means. Right, right. <laughs> so tell us more about so, that. So what it means is patient experience is everything. It starts the moment somebody decides to seek care, and it doesn't end until that final bill is paid in full. It's about every single interaction that a patient has with an organization every phone call, every email, every face-to-face -face encounter. Mm -hmm. All of that impacts and shapes how they feel about the organization. Absolutely. Okay, thank you for that definition. <laughs> I think that's helpful to, to me and those who are watching. Um, when you think about Ensemble Health Partners, you think of, of us being a, a revenue cycle management organization. So how does patient experience fit into that continuum? Yeah, that's a really good question. You know, we are a rev cycle company and we want to collect, obviously, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure we're doing it and still providing an exceptional patient experience because patient experience also impacts a company's financials. And patient experience is really about the reputation that the um, organization has in the community. Mm -hmm. And patients form that reputation. And that's what patient experience is all about. So it makes sense that we would dive into the patient experience arena because it's only helping our clients. That, absolutely, that makes sense. What What are some of the strategies that, that you use, we use at Ensemble to kind of work through those patient experience top of mind issues? Yeah, so I think we usually are focusing on three things. It's empathy, mm -hmm. it's empowerment, and it's engagement. Mm -hmm. So as far as empathy is concerned, if you don't discover the spoken and unspoken needs that a patient has, you can't begin to solve their problem. And so we do a lot of educating around how to be more empathetic and how to pick up on little cues that they're giving us um, as they're engaging with our staff. And then we empower our staff to use outside of the box thinking, not to go the normal way, but to really think about what they would want if they were in that patient's shoes mm -hmm. to solve their problem. And because we empower them so much, it increases their engagement. They really take um, more, I guess, more of a focus um, and more ownership into their own development mm -hmm. and into launching more initiatives on their own rather than waiting for us to tell them what to do and how to do the right thing. So the focus of patient experience and, and engagement is in the front end, right, of the revenue cycle, patient access, pre-access. What are some of the tactics or materials training that you do to deploy those types of messaging? So we really focus on doing analysis um, and intervention and education. And mm -hmm. so the analysis starts from the top. We look at the total department score. Mm -hmm. We break it down by section results. We break it down by questions. And we read every single comment that a patient takes the time to write because it's important to mm -hmm. know. Once we see that information, we actually plan data, database-based interventions mm -hmm. and then we implement changes based on what we're seeing. Doing all of that along with education based on what it is we're seeing from those comments and from that data will help us improve their scores. So my latest focus for education has been introduction to patient experience. So many people don't even know what it is, sure. what the expectation is, mm -hmm. or how to improve it, or even what their role in it is. And so mm -hmm. we've been spending a lot of time talking about AIDIT, um, which is acknowledge and introduce the duration, the explanation, and thanking them for choosing us. And then we've been spending a lot of time on service recovery. Mm -hmm. Okay. I heard you mention that you um, have some action planning and, and that kind of work happens within this space. Tell me about how you track, what, what technology is needed, what you know, data is needed in order to track and trend where you are from a baseline perspective and where, where you need to go. Most of our clients are on a press gainy platform who are doing their surveys. Mm -hmm. We take that data and we analyze it. We put it in a scorecard so we can trend everything out and see where we were last year compared to where we are now or where we were this year. And even as we plan an intervention, we, we mark that sheet to say, okay, this is what we've tried and let's see if that score changes in that way. So we're using a lot of just basic 
I don't know, I mean, we, we use Prescani, we have Excel scorecards and mm -hmm. spreadsheets, mm -hmm. and then, you know, time and action plans and, and things like that, just so we can track and trend and keep on top of everything. The one thing about patient experience that everybody fails to remember is it's not a one and done initiative. Mm -hmm. You have to constantly be improving and you have to take on that philosophy of, even though you've planned an intervention, if it's not working, you drop it. And mm -hmm. so it's really about adapting, adopting, or abandoning what we've decided to do if we're not seeing the results. When you mention ad adopt, adapt, um, moving forward in those kind of action plan events, how do you um, focus on communication and that transparent communication at the C-suite level of the healthcare organization? How do you message that? How do you talk about, you know, planning for the future and changing those scores? What's your tactics? So we do on-site analysis of where our clients are with patient experience, mm -hmm. and that includes meeting with the C-suite people, but it also includes spending a lot of time with your staff, because as you're meeting with C-suite, they need to know what the pulse of their own department is. Sometimes people have a blind eye to what's really happening because they're so used to being there sure. all the time, and so I can bring that message to them, mm -hmm. and it's sort of a safe message to get because <laughs> I'm an outsider coming in, and I don't really know them or their people. Um, and so we have a lot of conversations, and then we provide um, a, an analysis at the end that says, here's all the things you're doing really, really well, mm -hmm. and here's all the things I recognize that you could be doing better, and here's how you can do it. Let us know what we can help you with to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Earlier, I heard you mention that there's kind of a baseline program of you know, patient and guest experience that, that this is modeled after. Um, in looking forward, right, in, in terms of the next two years, where do you see patient experience going um, you know, focusing in on, on what that experience is and where, the, where you're going to model out at. It's only going to be more important as time goes on. I mm -hmm. think everybody is really starting to pay more attention to it and dedicate more resources to it. So I think it's going to be an initiative that you can't turn around in healthcare without knowing what's trending at your site and what your patient experience initiatives are. I think um, communication is is you know, critically important. Sure. And we communicate on so many different levels and so many different venues. We do facilitator-led instruction. We do on-demand webinars. Mm -hmm. We write white papers. We mm -hmm. have um, information in newsletters. And so I think it's really going to be something that you can't get away from. Mm -hmm. And it will be at the forefront of everybody's mind because we'll be talking about it so much. Yeah, and healthcare is is competitive, right? I mean, Absolutely. in your region, in your market, in, in wherever, you know, the audience is at is, is so critical. So you have to be aware of those triggers. Yeah, and you have to be aware that your audience is different. Mm -hmm. So are, are we talking to a frontline associate who's new to the organization and they have very basic knowledge about what's expected of them? Right. Are we talking about a leader who's on site who has a different level of expectation um, for what their role is with regard to patient experience? Are we talking about how to deliver just the information that the C-suite needs to know? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. So as we're talking, Susan, I hear the passion and see the passion in your face and your voice when you talk, get to talk about this very important subject. Can you tell me about how someone gets into this type of work, right? <laughs> It, how did you how did you fall into the space? So I really don't know how I fell into the space. Um, it was luck, really. I am passionate about patient experience. My background is really in learning and development with a retail company. Okay. And then I started working at um, Cincinnati Children's Hospital and all things non-clinical support services for patients. And I spent a lot of time with patients and their families hearing about what it is they needed and what was wrong in our system. Mm -hmm. And so I started working on patient experience there. And mm -hmm. then Ensemble um, reached out and said they wanted to develop a program and asked me if I would help and I was super excited about it because one of the reasons I'm passionate about it is I have um, an eight-year-old son who has Down syndrome, and mm -hmm. he was born with a surprise diagnosis of that. So I've been in the healthcare system for a really long time, and I know when it's being done well and when it needs improvement. Sure. And so I'm constantly experiencing it myself, and mm -hmm. I think that just puts me closer to the cause. Absolutely. I think that that's definitely looking through it with that lens, right, helps you provide a service to our clients that, that is unique, right? Absolutely. Because it is at the forefront, and, and we all are consumers of healthcare in one way or or the other. So that's interesting to, to hear. If we have folks that are watching and, and they want to get into this space, how do they learn more about patient experience in general, um, how things are trended in the industry? What would you recommend to, to those folks? I think you have to read um, mm -hmm. it comments from your own site. You want to know what your scores are and talk to patients because they're going to tell you what's missing and how to do it. I think, you know, to get into patient experience, you really just want to 
be the patient. Mm -hmm. Walk into an organization with their eyes and see it from their standpoint. Mm -hmm. And if you're having trouble finding something, you know they are. Right. And just take all the things that stand out to you and improve them. Mm -hmm. And then when you start seeing those small wins, I think you just get more passionate about it. Absolutely. What is, what's the one thing that you're excited about in terms of the program here at Ensemble, the, the work that we're doing and being a differentiator in this, in this space? What, what's the one thing that you are so excited or so proud to share with the audience? Gosh, there are so many things. <laughs> I think, I think um, the educating, the ed, you know, the education part where we're just making people better. We're mm -hmm. continuously growing associates and making them more self-aware mm -hmm. for how they're um, being perceived by our patients. Right. And I, so I think that's a big one. But I think the growth that we've already started to see in patient experience scores is also really exciting because oh, yeah. you want to be able to say, oh, gosh, we've done this. Right. And now we've seen an increase in scores. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, we've had some some nice movement on some focus sites. We took sort of two different approaches to rolling out patient experience in 2019. And the first one was a really high level approach. It was, you know, we're gonna create an SOP so our on-site leaders know what their re, um, responsibilities and expectations are. And then we're gonna make some introduction to patient experience training mandatory. Mm -hmm. And when we did that piece alone, we were seeing increases of up to five points across um, wow. emergency departments wow. under the total score and under the personal insurance section, which is a section we own in mm -hmm. RevCycle. Mm -hmm. And then when we took a more um, targeted approach with the rest of the groups and we picked some focus sites and we really went on site and we did some analysis of their scores, we did some journey mapping where we actually walked through their organization with the eyes of a patient in mind, and then we planned interventions based on what we found, we were seeing movement of up to 15 points wow. over a five-month period, which is significant. Yeah. Now, the thing you have to remember is, again, patient experience isn't one and done. And Correct. so to or in order to maintain those scores, that focus has to continue. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there are um, other industries that are impacting the healthcare space that folks are learning to take from, right? The Disney's of the world, the those that have that guest patient experience already in place. Are we is the industry learning from those folks? And will that help shape kind of what we see in patient engagement in the future? Well, if they're not learning from those folks, they should be. <laughs> right. Because I'm always looking at other industries to see what we can what we can take from them, mm -hmm. um, what we can borrow. And I do a lot of work with... Um, with hotel companies uh -huh. to see how their services. I'm constantly watching as I travel, because I travel a lot, to see who's delivering a great experience and how they're doing it, what made my experience with them stand out to me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm constantly looking. If if we want to grow in this field and we really want to be the best we can, we do have to look at Disney. We have to say, you know, what's setting them apart and what makes their experience so important. And I think one of the big things for Disney is that they always preach you have to know when you're on stage. Mm -hmm. And in healthcare, that's a problem mm -hmm. because people think, oh, if the patient's across the room from me, I, they can no longer see or hear what I'm what I'm saying, but they can. They mm -hmm. have the most amazing hearing mm -hmm. um, and vision. And so they're constantly on stage. And I think that's something we could learn from them. And so I think we have to constantly be looking. Right. Thanks, Susan, for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. It was great. Be on the lookout for more Operator Insights.